outside the box. And didn't fancy the fourth because I saw you giving the ball yeah, to well, him. I was, I was on it. I was going to take it, but you know, Fabio is a special moment for him. I think he's expecting a baby, and he won the penalty. So he asked if he could take it. I said, of course, team sport. I've got three, so yeah. Well, Sheffield United, they, they set deep, especially in the first half, but not only you managed to find goals, you managed to find three goals. So what was important in the way you move, in the way you read the, the game, to find those spaces and find the three goals? Yeah, just stay patient. Um, you know, in games like this, where it's tight and it's low, it's about staying patient, staying in the right areas, arriving in the right areas. And my teammates found me today and I was able to finish my chances. And emotionally, how, how did it feel for you to, to score the hat-trick? Yeah, amazing. It's my first Premier League hat-trick. Uh, here with the fans, the supporters, my family, my friends, and to do it with my teammates is an amazing feeling. So, really happy with the three goals and the win. And another nice moment when you got the, the captain's armband, how was it? Yeah, no, nah, <laughs> dream come true. A special moment for me, obviously, being a childhood fan to, to captain the squad and to, to lead the team. You know, obviously, B was first time captain as well, which is really good. So, now nah, we're here, we came from a halo, and we know what it means to the club. So, it's really proud and special for us to be able to wear the armband. You got a chance in the in the team after Gabriel Jesus' uh, injury, and he's been doing really well. But how much t pressure do you put on yourself in a positive way, of course, to score when you get these chances? I try not to put too much pressure. I know I'm capable of scoring goals. You know, it's just about being patient, getting in the right areas, and, and working every day. Um, I'm training hard even when I'm playing, not playing, scoring, not scoring. Always putting on the work on the training pitch to to make sure I'm sharp. And you know, moments like this are, are good rewards for it. Well done, then, Eddie. Thank, Thank you. Very much. Cheers. Just the five matches this week. Three of the top six in action, including Arsenal and Newcastle. We asked for two legends, but Thierry Henry and Shola <laughs> <Lamiobi> couldn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> to the uh, Emirates, where unbeaten Arsenal faced winless Sheffield United. Bukayo Saka had scored or assisted in six straight games. The last Englishman to do so in seven for Arsenal was... Ian Wright. <laughs> there won't be no assist in there. But. <laughs> Pure goals. Uh, your commentator, Steve Wilson. Eddie, congratulations. Your first Premier League hat-trick. It must be a great feeling. Yeah, amazing. Um, obviously, it's not been, been easy. You know, last month I lost my, my auntie, so I just want to dedicate this, these three goals to her. You know, her family were here watching today, so I want a really special moment. I want to dedicate it to her. The first half of the second half was chalk and cheese. Although Arsenal had a lot of the ball first half, I think Wes had one save to make. But second half, the goals were really poor, what we conceded. But it's probably a reflection of how I felt the game was. Um, they outfought us as well as outplayed us in the second half. We know we're down to bare bones and we're missing some big personalities and some physicality. But the boys were stepping in on the pitch, the boys who were getting the opportunity. Yeah, need to grasp it. We had a really emotional week. Uh, we're travelling, playing two very, very tough away games. And, uh, and today was a, a very different context, you know, we had to be prepared for that and we had to be patient. Uh, but as well, we had to do certain things better than the first half, to attack them better, to create them more problems, be more of a threat and, and play the game where we want it. I don't know if you know this, there's only two Arsenal players who have ever scored four goals in a Premier League game. Thierry Henry, Andre Arshavin. It could have been Henri, Arshavin yeah. and Ketia. I know, I know. And to be <laughs> fair, my first instinct was to grab the ball and go. But obviously Fabio won it and he's expecting a little one um, soon. So it's about being team team player. You know, he's found me on other occasions in the game. So it was his time to, to get a chance and he took it away. So I'm happy. Not unbeaten though, are they? There's only a couple of sides that are unbeaten in the, in the yeah, Premier League. Arsenal yeah. being one of them. Yes, they are. Um, you know, and it's, at the minute, you know, it's, it's, it's good because... At this stage of the season, they've, they've done it. They've done it last season. They know what to do at this stage of the season. So we're not seeing the greatest footballers, especially uh, watching that first, that one, well, not the first, the first 77 minutes to against... Stay in the games and then, you know, win the game. You know what I mean? Or, or draw the game. So that's what they're learning at this stage. You know, that's why everybody's stay, trying to stay calm and not get too excited about what's going on. But you have to win the games. You have to be do, amongst do it. Do you know why? That Chelsea <clears> win, <throat> I think, to me... The draw, Ch Chelsea oh, sorry, draw. The Chelsea draw is as valuable as any yeah. other wins. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. The character they showed, Arsenal of the past possibly would have, you know, maybe not shown that that desire to go all the way to the wire. Yeah. But the fact that they had the character to fight back, to grab the goals. Mm. But I think that was Mikel's it. subs as well. Yeah, in the well, game yeah. against City, I thought his subs were really good. You know, they impacted the game. They had sides and they got the ball in the box. But against Chelsea, the same. So the subs had a, you know, had a big impact mm -hmm. on kind of Trust, changing yeah. the course yeah. of that game. But don't you think that all round, that, that whole, that spirit of 
we are not losing this game. Well, that's the regardless thing. Regardless of how little time we Rice have makes left. a great point. It's no point in doing that. It's great at 10 games. You, mm. you only really know a team, the championship teams, oh, yeah, yeah. at the end of the season in the big moments. Absolutely. And that's where they've, no disrespect, they've come a little bit short, you know, in Champions League mm. places. And then last season, I'm amazed how far along they are, being one of the youngest teams in the league. Yeah. But not, they got to, right, makes a great point. You got to do it. That's the, the thing. In the biggest big moments, you know, towards the end of the season. And they look stronger with Declan mm. for the. But here's Absolutely. the point. When you look at the Liverpool game, they were two, ten, down to 10 men. Um, and they, they had this injustice against them. They're at Newcastle, and everyone thought this is this is a difficult place to go. Newcastle are going to win this, and the will they showed to mm. come through and win that game, mark them down as potential champs. And you're right, it is very early, but sometimes early in the season you can set the standard for the level of 100%. performance that you expect. Yeah, and off. That's what's keeping them now at this level. They're not dropping off having had a couple of good seasons. They're still there. Still They're there. Still in That's there. the biggest jump, isn't it, righty? From being a really good team, yeah. I think, to, to a- then become a champ. You know, and how do you how do you bridge that gap with a with a probably the youngest team in the league? I think that's going to be Mikel's biggest well, challenge. Me- yeah, it's mentality because obviously we've seen that we've got the players who are more than good enough. Um, so it would come down to mentality and not resting on laurels, because like I say, two 0 down at Chelsea. You're right, probably. A team of that age didn't have the experience that they they gained from last season. You probably think, okay, we'll, we'll we'll try again next week. But they got a sniff. They got back in the game. Saka Cucurella is one of his best games I've seen mark, trying to mark. He's, he slipped in for, and bam, you're back in the game because your two top players, Declan and Saka, came up with the goods. And what you do when you go back in the dressing room is that you go back and you say, that 77 minutes what we started is nowhere near good enough and we're going to try and do what we're trying to do. And that's the kind of mentality that is, is, that's there now and it's up to them to keep on pushing because they're going to have to. And you're going to need more teams to push as well. You can't just leave it on one team. Mm. And that's why I feel like it's so exciting this year. It is exciting. Exciting for Eddie Katia the weekend as well, Very getting his hat trick. Yeah. Is he, I mean, <coughs> is he a... A really important squad player from Arsenal rather than the solution. I, th- I think so. We had a good chat. I was speaking to me and Alan Sheeran. We're talking about it. And, you know, you have to go back to the best example I can say is somebody who's accepted that I'm a squad player. It's Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Yeah. Now, you know, I'm sitting, even when we was driving in, I was saying, I'd probably swap my career with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's <laughs> in respects of people saying, oh, but you, you know, you weren't playing regularly enough. And, but you're at Man United. You're with great players. You're in all the top competitions. You're going to get games. He scored loads of goals. And he's a, that, that player now, he's come on. I've seen him score four goals against Nottingham Forest when he came on. And I've seen him come on and score a winning goal in the Champions League. Now, I think that Eddie may have got to the place in his head where he's thinking, well, where am I going to go if I leave Arsenal to get the same calibre of football, um, to, to, to play in the Champions League, keep myself scoring at this level and play for England without having to leave Mm. and try and prove myself somewhere. You're here. Except, you, so, do you think he'd accept that the young kids, they all, they all want everything and they think they can be the guy and I respect that. But you make a great point. You, you could stay there and be a, just a great squad player at Arsenal up, for a decade. Exactly. Score 200 goals, win everything rather than go be the main guy at, you know, wherever that is, yeah. whether it's Palace or, you know, Everton. I'm with you. I, I, I think I'm, the guys are better off sitting still. I'm, hope, I'm, I'm thinking now, Darren, and you'd have to um, correct me if I'm wrong, if players can now, in their heads saying, yeah, I, I can be... The way that the game is now and the rotation and everything, I probably, if I was playing now, I could take that role where Eddie's... You got. wouldn't have when you were playing now. No, 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 <laughs> different time. No way would I accept it because you want to score and you felt like when we was playing, you had to score. So as you played next week and the more you score, the more, the more you're going to pl- stay in the game. But now you can score goals and still be left out. Yeah. But well, there's enough... Comp- exactly. 